I would suggest is to start by you telling me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Zane Starr. I'm the founder of Create Dream Tech. Uh, and so I've uh, been uh, developing software for like the past decade. We're getting everything from wireless sensor networks to uh, decentralized science fiction on the blockchain uh, consensus. Um, and, you know, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> uh, so, like, uh, the kind of inspiration behind Create Dream Tech is to um, make open source software um, based off these sort of observations I've seen uh, and make impacts, uh, and particularly the tooling and, like, sort of infrastructure uh, layer and to sort of make this kind of sustainable vision of like um, tools and tooling. Uh, how you got interested in blockchain first place and th how that relates to what to do uh, and, and how you see software engineering in the near and long-term future. So how I got into blockchain. So um, a few years back, oh, maybe five years now, something like that. Uh, I was working kind of on the fringes of like blockchain. I was working on these things called uh, conflict-free replicated data types. Um, so it's kind of the stuff that you would use for uh, having real-time sort of collaboration. And so it's like, oh, if you have these centralized servers, uh, how do you all contribute to the same thing without like having to do this process called locking? Um, and so, like, I was in that space for a little while and working on this uh, collaborative note taker, and then I moved to trying to do decentralized storage for uh, uh, this other project called NOMS, which was a probabilistic, like, sort of Merkle tree. And then, so I, I've been, I was like dancing around blockchain, uh, and then things kind of changed. My friend joined Consensus, um, and he was like, Hey, Zane. Uh, what do you think about like blockchain stuff? And so I was like, oh, well, maybe. And so I started uh, playing around with it over the summer. Uh, I think maybe it was 2017 or 2018, something like that. Uh, and then I was like, oh yeah, this is really cool. Uh, I hacked on that for a while and then uh, I joined Consensus uh, on this project called Solarius, which was to create some decentralized science fiction. And then sort of after that um, project sort of uh, got rolled up in the sort of downturn or burst of like 2018 or 2019, um, I moved on to Ethereum Classic Labs uh, and I just continued the journey there, just like talking to different like startups and helping them build projects uh, and really getting a deeper dive into the uh, building of infrastructure. I worked on the project with storage uh, to basically allow for storage of blockchain data to be um, not tied directly to the client. So you could have it as a service. Um, so kind of a real overview and deep dive into like blockchain technology. Um, and so that's kind of like how I got into blockchain and then on a deeper sort of like front, where do I think things are going? Uh, I'm really sort of excited about identity technology, uh, delegation of like a sort of identity, and then also um, like optimistic rollups and error correcting like codes, all that is really like cool. Um, verifiable computing. <laughs> hey. Uh, so like that all like makes a lot of sense to me and it's like very exciting um, technology. Um, and then on the software front, I think a lot about um, token economies um, and like crafting these sort of closed loop systems that really allow you to uh, set the terms of value transfer and craft an experience for your users that can really suit their needs or to flip it on its head and allow your users to craft their own experience to come up with their own uh, sort of things. So DAOs, I still think, are an important thing, um, despite the, <laughs> the whole problem with DAOs. Uh, I believe that you're just scratching the surface of what's possible with the blockchain tech. I'm very curious to know how this thing is going to unfold in the future. So yeah, how did you get into Carti, this idea, and... Uh, 
Tell me about it. I think actually uh, you had posted something on like Get Hoin about um, uh, this incubation program. And my original thought was, oh, this would be cool to think about infrastructure as a service and then to think about what it would take to sort of build this kind of marketplace where I could opt into different machines and like have an easy way of deciding what machines I wanted to run, uh, manage these like sort of machines in various ways. And so I started going down that like sort of logical thought and I said, wait a second here. I am kind of struggling to like get all the pieces I need in order to build these machines. I was like, it seems like what would be really cool would be like a package manager as like the first step <laughs> and any sort of process of building like a larger sort of infrastructure shared platform. And so I was like, okay, what would be really cool in a package manager and what would be something that would be really extensible and could serve uh, this platform? And so I'd seen a lot of different package managers and um, in my career, like played with a lot of different like paradigms. And the thing that I wanted to do that was really sort of innovative is um, think about it from a decentralized uh, experience, but not a crappy one. So it's really easy, I think, to just say, like, I'm going to throw, like, blockchain into this. And then the next thing you know, you need to have a wallet to sign the thing to do the thing to make the money or <laughs> to make the app. So... Um, how can we embrace the centralized paradigms and then make it so that way the user can gradually move to a more uh, trustless um, paradigm or they can choose the levels of trust that they want to add into the system. So uh, in my mind, decentralization is a lot about choice. So how do you open things up? And so that's kind of like the perspective I took um, when coming up with the idea for Cardi. Package management is such a basic uh, tool that's quite helpful for lots of developers that will come to this ecosystem. So, At its core, uh, I've built the system in such a way that you can take these same paradigms and principles and like, specs and you can apply them to multiple different situations. So you can imagine a shared infrastructure um, for these things. And then... As it matures, there'll be uh, nice ways for uh, users to sign or act as their own sources of authority, which would be like also cool. So just to wrap up, uh, can you just summarize where you are at uh, with Carti at this point and where do you want to get in the next uh, weeks or months? Okay, cool. So Carti right now, I would say, is in beta. <laughs> Like, yes, you can use it. It will allow you to install a cartizing machine. You can actually write a cartizing machine configuration in JSON. So that's like huge. You don't have to write in Lua. And then it will generate a machine that you can run. Additionally, you can publish assets to the web. So that could be S3, it could be GitHub, it could be insert your hosting service as you want, so it could be StoreJ. Uh, there aren't native plugins, um, but that's coming. So in the future, uh, in the near term, storage plugin system to make it easier to like store these assets natively in their decentralized form. Uh, and then drive composition, uh, which... Uh, Diego uh, was talking uh, to Milton about and then talked to me about, and that's really cool. So you can get around that eight drive limit uh, for your Cartesi machines and then more test. So um, right now I would encourage you to download it, run it, try it. It's going to be really fast and it's going to like change your life. Um, probably in the near term, I'd like to coordinate with the team to come up with either the tutorial packages um, to just make it really like easy to uh, get started. I think that what's really exciting about Cartesi is I really am in love with this idea of being on this risk five, like architecture, open source architecture, which is great. And then um, the idea of meeting developers where they're at. So, uh, instead of forcing them to use some tool that they're unfamiliar with, how can we take the familiar tool and then 
allow them to run it in a trustless manner. And so like that I think is like the, the huge paradigm and then how you do that. And I think optimistic rollups are going to be awesome uh, for like reducing the costs and like bundling the transactions. So uh, yeah, I think it's a really exciting time to be in the Cartesi like ecosystem. I'm grateful that you are working uh, with us and helping a lot in the development of Cartesi and let's see what people are going to build. So, yeah, that's a lot. Exactly.